Yes, yeah, so folks, I'm at the Veggie Garden in Coburg. That's our garden center in Coburg. And I'm gonna talk about harvesting. Now, I know all of you know how to harvest. Well, most of you do. But there's also the continuing picking or the continuous picking that you can do with your plants. Like you can go with your cauliflowers, you can eat the leaves. These have only been in the ground about six weeks. So they are far too early to start forming the head, but they are growing some beautiful leaves and you should eat them. Cut them off and enjoy the leaves while they form their head. There is nothing wrong with that. And the same thing with your lettuce plants. If you're not gonna eat the whole lettuce in the first day, then cut only some of the outer leaves that you need, just enough to suffice for a salad. And the lettuce will always come back again. So always start from the bottom sides. Don't always pick from the middle. Come from the bottom, cut your leaves off all the way around if you like. And then depending on how many leaves you need, take them all off and leave the center in so it continuously grows. Because if you cut the crown off, it'll grow back, but it'll become a multiple head. Now that's if you want, or it might actually just bolt and go to seed. So by just picking leaves from the outside, you got yourself some lettuce leaves there. For a person, like I said, if there's two people or three people, we'll cut more lettuce leaves on the outside or literally harvest the whole head of lettuce. And the, and the same with silver beet. Now, silver beet, if you haven't grown it before, or if you have, and you haven't allowed it to grow to its full potential, can reach up to five foot, six foot in height. And the best way to get that height is by just picking the outer leaves on the outside like that. I can just go to the next one, actually. These are delicious. And these don't have to be cooked. Look at this, this is nuts. Beetroot. Let me get a bowl, this is nuts. Just put this over here. Why I'm saying it's nuts, folks, is because at home, as you know, my veggie garden at home, the weather being so much more harsher, they don't grow as fast. But we've also got the, uh, the grow stick going on in here, so it's really helping the plants develop all that more quicker, bigger and healthier too. So beetroot leaves, a delight for a salad. Looks like I'm having a salad today. And then we've got the kale leaves. And again, with kale, it's all about continuous picking, folks. Start from the bottom, because the kale will give you continuously, grow at about five foot easily. You will start to get flowers on top. And if you want to stop it from going to seed, simply cut the flower heads off before they fully develop. Again, pick from the bottom. I haven't even caused a dint in this little garden bed here yet with all the things that I've picked here. And this is a decent salad that I'm going to make out of this. Have a look at the tomato. How cool is that? That was planted a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. We're seeing how they go. Hopefully they were gonna go backwards on me and they haven't. And the capsicums are actually doing really well as well. I'm really happy with them. Have a look at this. How crazy, this is the lettuce. How crazy is that? That's nuts. I'm gonna pull all this out now. This has to come out. There's a lot of us in the family, by the way. So this ain't gonna waste. Now you can either cut it to the ground and I'll show you what I mean by that. If you don't want to pull the plant out by the roots, I normally use a knife, folks. I haven't got a knife here. Cut it just above the ground like that. See what I've done there? Now that will actually sucker up and push on more foliage out of the side there. Look, it may not grow to its full potential the second time round, but not a bad go for about eight weeks in growing time, eight or nine weeks. Just the one plant like that. But at least if it does grow, you'll get a small harvest out of that as well the next time around. But in my case, folks, I'm gonna actually take the roots out. Look, before I go to the next topic here, I just wanna reflect on the quality of the plants here. These have been planted in. For those who haven't seen me do the planting here, I mean, look, it deserves another credit on this one here. It's our, we've got our cocoa pith at the bottom of the beds. So look at these beds here, they're 800 I. The bottom half has got either cocoa pith or a straw, a, a bale of straw up to here. Then the top half, I've mixed in a little bit of our compost and our planting mix. Obviously our superfood and black roots in there as well. And that's it. Now that quality of planting mix, so you know what's in it, has superfood, black grit, compost, charcoal, uh, cow manure, and I'm just trying to remember everything, and cocoa pith as well, and the, the rice hull as well. So there are five or six different elements that we put into it to create the planting mix. And it's something that we've, we've been trying, trialing for a long time. And we finally found a nice balance of it. And these are the results. No insecticide sprays, no fungicide sprays, literally plant and forget. And if your plants are healthy, 
they'll build up their own immune system and defense mechanisms so insects will struggle to attack them. The only thing that we got hit by was hailstones on these plants here. On these. Here's the remnants of it there. The holes are there. Right? There were no snails, no slugs, no white fly on the underside. Absolutely nothing on them. Super clean and the, and the secret to that is healthy soil. We talk about healthy soil and you know I speak about it all the time. If you're going to have a healthy garden you need to start with the soil. Our planting mix is pretty much it. Now there's plenty of other products out there of other companies who produce a beautiful compostable planting mix themselves. But if you want to try something different or something that we do and if you want to have the success and results that we do, this is where you got to go. So there's one lettuce <laughs> and spring onions. With the spring onions, oh look we've got one weed that's grown in here, let's get rid of that, put that aside. With the spring onions folks, this is the way I love to harvest mine. Straight down to the bottom, cut off and that's it. This goes straight into the kitchen and then a few weeks later we come back and harvest another batch out of that. So we'll monitor that over the next few weeks and see how it goes. I just wish I had a tomato and a cucumber. Well I've got some here, I got myself a nice long green cucumber. And I've got one of the uh, tomatoes. This is a gourmet trust tomato that we're going to grow here as well. And I've also got a Lebanese cucumber and a sweet chili and a hot chili. Now, as you can see, I've got four or five plugs here. This is our spring summer range that I'm going to start planting. But what you see that I'm going to do, I'm not planting it all at once. I'm going to plant a little bit at a time. So we've got the continuous picketing going on. So I'm going to remove some of these plants that I'm ready to harvest and start replacing them with this. Two or three weeks ago, we planted our first tomato in here, our capsicum. Have a look at this. No sprays, no insecticides, purely in the planting mix and our liquid gold at EK Butch. That's all I've done. And now I'm going to plant the next batch, which is about three weeks later in this little garden bed here, folks. So let's pull out our lettuce, share it with the kids and the family and start planting our tomatoes and cucumbers. I just cut another batch of spring onion and the smell, the pungent smell that just came from it, so rich. <laughs> That's how rich it is, I guarantee you. Go to your local supermarket, go for a walk in there and grab a couple of the, the veggies there and see if you can smell anything, folks. Honestly, do it. Tell me if you can, because if you can, I'll be, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Now, back to the lettuce. You can either cut it to the ground, as I showed you before, or pull it out. Now, if you cut it off at the base, and you're not going to eat it all in the first day, you're basically harvesting a little patch there, you're best to take it out with the roots as well. And why I say that is because the plant will still draw up its nutrients or moisture that it needs from the root ball. Now, I don't know how big this root ball is, but ah, oh, here we go. Just give me a second. I'm going to take off some of the soil. Uh, look how good the roots are. Look at this, super clean, like that, all right. Now harvest it like that if you can, you know, ch shake off as much of the roots as you can possibly. And then if you're not going to eat it in the first day or second day, sit it in a pot of water and that way it doesn't go limp and it keeps its moisture. Look, you get a little bit of soil on the leaves here and there, but that's, that's easily washed off. I'd rather have a super fresh lettuce like that. Also, if you don't want to do that with the roots, you can actually submerge all the leaves in a bowl of water and wrap it up with some gla um, glad wrap or something like that or put a lid on it and store it in the fridge. And that way it stays hydrated. Otherwise, that will dehydrate really quick. So there's a little tip for you when you're harvesting your lettuce. Put that aside. And because I'm planting here, I need to take out the roots. I can't leave them in there. They'll be in the way. Oh, geez, these plants have got so much more life in them, but we need room for our spring stuff and we're hungry. Before we plant the next little batch of seedlings here, folks, we need to break the surface tension. And that's the crust on the surface, just to loosen it up, just like that. You don't have to turn it over. Plenty of nutrients still in this garden bed here. And again, at the end of the day, we liquid feed it with our EK Butch and liquid gold. That's all we need to do. Now, I'm going to put a cucumber at the front. I'm going to put a tomato in the middle and another cucumber here. And these capsicums, well, they're going to have to wait till maybe I'll put them in the next bed there. So put them aside. Favorite tool, favorite tool. It's called a dibbler. 
poke a hole like that, drop it in and cover over. That's our little plant and plug seedlings. Poke a hole, drop it in and cover over. That's all we need to do. And one more on this side. Poke a hole, plant it in. Now don't worry about the shadow here from these leaves. In the next couple of days I'm going to harvest this leaf. Actually I might just take this one off. There we are. Now this is what it's about. Grow it yourself, harvest it, share it with the family and friends and enjoy some real quality, you know, as nature intended produce. This is so, the, 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 the nutrient density, I can't express how important it is to be in your food. It's not about just the looks and these look, oh, sorry, did I swear? These look fantastic, but they also taste even better than that. So get yourself some plug and plants, get yourself some planting mix, all that stuff's available on our website, or go to your local garden centre and support them as well with whatever they have, but keep it natural, keep it real, keep it clean. Otherwise you're defeating the whole purpose of why you grow it yourself at home. And if you've got a nice little microclimate like this, you're not going to miss out on anything come springtime, summertime, as the plants start to grow. I've got to... <laughs> I'm going to go home and eat all this now. Well, I'm just going to go inside and eat it and then go home and plant my veggie garden in Lethbridge. Check out our website, VasilisGarden.com. From 30 to 70% off a huge selection of online products for your garden. Enjoy it from Eva Silly, Maresi.